Good evening and welcome to BCHL Central. I'm your host, Tally Campbell, from the Parliament Buildings here in British Columbia, Victoria. On today's episode of BCHL Central, I talked to Dan Marsh, the voice of the Nama Clippers. We've got some news about the Alberni Valley Bulldogs. That and so much more, you're currently watching BCHL Central. Previously the weekend, I got an opportunity to speak to the voice of the Alma Clippers, Dan Marshall from 106.9 The Wolf. Check it out. I'm now joined the voice of the Alma Clippers, Dan Marshall. Of course, the Clippers are in town tonight against the Victoria Grizzlies here at Bear Mountain Arena. They are 4-5. and five. Is that a right start season, Clippers? Well, it's not where you want to be, obviously, but you look how tough this division is. Four of the five teams are under the 500 mark right now. It's ultra competitive. I've talked to Craig Divin of the Grizzlies about it. I've talked to Mike Vandekamp about it very recently, and they've said, look, shows how good this division is, how competitive it is. It's not a sign of weakness. The Clippers just recently announced their new captains. Uh, Scott, what about that? Is you know, it's late in this, well, I shouldn't say late in the season, but early in the season, but kind of later on, the most team named their... Uh, later on in the going. Then I had an unusual way of doing it. Two alternate captains to start the year, Scott Pryor and Colton Dolan. They opted to go with Scott Pryor, a veteran, a guy that Mike Vandekamp really, really likes for what he can do as a defensive leader on the ice and for how he conducts himself off the ice. So you kind of knew it was going to be Dolan or Pryor. And now you've got Dolan and Taylor, two three-year guys wearing A's as alternate captains. Devin Brasso is a first-year guy as an alternate captain as well. They like their leadership group and they think now that they're down to 22, their roster was at 24 for quite a while. They think that they've got a group they can really move forward with. They've got a leadership group that they're very comfortable with. So I think Maybe it's a little later than they want, but it's nice that they have this now, a 22-man roster and a leadership core. Talk about a 22-man roster, of course, a couple guys left. What's the reason for that? Dylan Denemy, it just never really fit. You know, he was a guy last year that had good chemistry with Scott Pryor and Corey Morgan. They played together for the LaSalle Vipers in Ontario. But this year, Dylan couldn't really find that role as a first or second line center. And as a 20-year-old veteran, he needed to fill that role. He knew it wasn't working, they knew it wasn't working, so he made the decision, and I think it was somewhat a mutual decision. Uh, let's head back home and uh, see maybe if there's an opportunity in Ontario closer to home and maybe at a level that's just a little bit less speedy than the BC Hockey League. I think his foot speed was an issue for him, trying to be an offensive player. It was hard for him to catch up to the tremendous pace in the BC Hockey League. Zach Sabatini, numbers game situation, and the Clippers and Zach working on a place for him to play in the US. He just never really found a spot in the Clippers' top nine forward group. They're happy now that they just have one extra forward, one extra D-man so they can move forward. Their practices don't have 24 guys out there trying to shift line rushes. They don't have to really take a forward line out every game. That's what they were doing for the first nine games of the year. Now they can really focus in with the guys they have. So I think it's about time to see this team down to 22. And of course, uh, later on this season, well, in June or area, uh, Michael Olsen stepped down, assistant coach. Uh, Mike Vanekin brought in Dave Johnson and Brad Lieb. How are those two doing? Uh, Brad's trying to fit in with his schedule. He just retired from pro hockey over in England, so he's having a hard time adjusting to being out for every single Clipper game. So right now I'd say he's the part-time assistant coach. When he's here, he brings a lot to the table. And the Clippers want to see him here more and more as he can sort out his schedule and his new non-hockey playing life. He's going to be a huge asset. Dave Johnson has really fit in well. Him and Mike Vandekamp get well along on a personal level. They know each other very well. They have the same hockey philosophies. And I think that as this group grows together as a coaching staff that you're going to see that they're going to be able to find ways to win games in the third period because that's what the players and the coaches are looking to do right now. They've put themselves in a position to win on a nightly basis in the third period. Now they need to take games home in that situation. Great. Thank you, Dan. Listen to all of Dan's broadcasts. Go to 106.9thewolf.com. And a correction in that, the website for 106.9thewolf.com is 106.9thewolf.com. It's now time to look at the scores from Thursday and Friday night. Thursday night, the Maris Centennials beat the Spruce Kings 4-1. Again, on Thursday, Trail Smoke Eaters lost San Ramon Silbeck 7-2. On Friday night, the Power Kings beat the Surrey Eagles 6-4. Alberni Valley Bulldogs lost Cowboys Valley Capitals 4-2. Riverman beat the Copeland Express 3-1. Prince George lost the Penticton Vs 2-0. Chilliwack Chiefs lost the Vernon Vipers 4-1. West Kelowna Warriors beat the Maris Centennials 3-1. The Nanaimo Clippers lost to Victoria Grizzlies 4-2. The San Francisco Blacks lost to the Trail Smoke Eaters 5-2-1. 
All right, now pass things to our game of the week. The West Clinton Warriors taking on the Prince George Spruce Kings. Here's John Zach with a call. Well, Lois just ran into Christian, didn't get all of them, and here's a goal, Pacheco. Nice setup from Justin Rye. Spruce Kings score first. They lost 5-1 in Merritt and 2-0 in PG last night. Another chance, Rye scores! What a shift for Justin Rye. Warriors making a change, and right out comes Carl Hessler. Hessler through the D. Hessler stopped by Murray. Great rush there from the Boston product. Wait, another three on two. Blackburn carries up the right. To Dolman in front, to Lloyd scores! That is beautiful! Goal tonight, closing in. Pass wasn't on the money for Wideauer to one-time it. Pacheco, now Wideauer, one-timer scores! Five on three goal for the Spruce Kings. They restore the two goal lead. I said, Jeremiah Ludke finds the Eden in the high slot to his backhand stop by Desatel, and he hung on with his right pad and a penalty coming as Graham was hooked up. Spruce Kings looking to get their first win in four games. Claw Bob 500, Cotton, shot blocked, rebound to Hessler, had a great chance and it was blocked as well. Two huge shot blocks from the Prince George D. Hessler scores! Would not be denied. It's now time for the VCHL news and just north of the Parliament Buildings, about an hour and a half down, Nanaimo named their brand new captain, Scott Pryor, for the 2013-14 season. Pryor will be joined with Brendan Taylor, Colton Dahl, and Devin Brosey as the assistants. In, in trade news now, the West Coast Warriors have transferred the CJH playing rights to Tanner Brugatti to the Western Red Wings, the SJHL in exchange of future considerations. The Soar Eagles have acquired the playing rights of Devin Fortsey from the Brooks Bands to the AJHL in exchange for the playing rights of Zane Schwartz. The Vernon Vipers Hockey Club have acquired CJH playing rights to Michael Stiliadis from the o Georgetown Raiders Hockey Club of the OJHL in exchange for future considerations. The Couch Valley Capitals Hockey Club have transferred the CJH playing rights to Devin Hines to the Flynn Flon Bombers of the SJHL exchange for future consideration. And as we talked about earlier on, the Alberni Valley Bulldogs Club have acquired the siege playing rights to Brody Close and future considerations for the White Court Wolverines Hockey Club of the Alberta Junior Hockey League exchange for the playing rights of Luke Flinsk. And the Alberni Valley Hockey Club have acquired CJ playing rights to Connor Lacouve for the Merritt Centennials in exchange for future considerations. It's now time for the player, the story, the scores for Saturday and Sunday in the BCHL. The Power Kings beat the Pentic sorry, the Picton V beat the Power Kings 4-3 in overtime. The Nam Clippers beat Couch Valley Capitals 3-0. Victoria Grizzlies slammed the Alberni Valley Bulldogs 5-1. Vernon Vipers won 5-4 in overtime against the Chilliwack Chiefs. Prince George beat West Clinton Warriors 3-2, as you've seen in our game of the week. Story goes lost Lane Irvman 3-1. 4-2 was the score for Quitlam vs. Merritt. And on Sunday afternoon, it was Power Kings beating the Trail Smoke Eaters 3-2. Now passing to our spotlight, Mitch McLean of the Langley Riverman. Here's Nick Bazarin. Mitch, it's been a pretty big year for yourself. You committed to Bowling Green State University earlier in 2013. What was the decision like going to Bowling Green? Why there? Um, you know, I went on a visit early this summer, and uh, and it just it just felt right. It was kind of a smaller campus. Uh, everyone knows everybody. It's kind of a college town. But uh, not only that, but Ty Eigner was a coach of mine when I was growing up uh, in Brainerd. And then also Matt Pocamp, my line mate for three years of high school hockey, committed there. And it just felt like the right thing to do. And uh, also I'll get to play in front of my family a couple of times, which is a big and important deal for me. Yeah, for sure, especially when you visit Bemidji in uh, Minnesota. Have you talked to anybody from your hometown about being able to play in front of them for the first time in about two years? Well, I just know uh, Josh Archibald, he plays at University of Nebraska Omaha. I played high school hockey with him. Uh, when he played in Bemidji, they came back and uh, a lot of people went to support him and he had, a, he had a good weekend actually. I think he had four goals, which is huge. You always want to score in front of your hometown fans. Have you talked to any of uh, the seniors or even the juniors, just the guys who are currently on the roster at Bowling Green? Yeah, uh, and they, they're part of the reason too. They gave me nothing but great things about the coaching staff and what it is to play hockey at Bowling Green. So. Uh, I couldn't thank them for helping me with as much information as they gave me. And now coming out of Brainerd, you came to the BCHL. Why the BCHL and not take one of the American routes such as the NAHL? Um, you know, Coach Henderson saw me play and uh, he really liked me. And I mean, you got to go where you're wanted. That was the advice I was given by my parents and uh, a couple of my coaches. They said, go where you're wanted. And Coach Henderson really wanted me and pursued me. And I felt comfortable coming up to Langley and playing hockey. 
And now do you see uh, some differences between the American style versus, say, like the Canadian style in the BCHL? Um, I played for a Canadian coach in high school in Jim Archibald, so I got really familiar with that gritty, hard-nosed hockey along the boards, grind it out, and that's what Coach Henderson wants us to do here. Uh, he, he likes skilled players, but he likes his skilled players to be tough as well. So uh, I think it's just a good fit, and I'm glad I came. And now Logan Smith was a former captain of Langley Riverman. He's gone on to university now, and you've been picked as the captain of the Langley Riverman. I mean, rightfully so with uh, your performance last year and your rookie year in the BCHL. How did you hear about uh, becoming the captain of Langley Riverman, and what was the reaction? Well, actually, uh, we were working out. I stayed after the season for a little bit, for about a month and a half or so, and uh, I stuck around, and Coach and I were the only two in there working out, and he just came up to me and said, hey, you earned it, congratulations, you're going to be our leader next year. And, you know, it was, it was a big thing. I think I called my parents right away and told them, but, I mean, it's just an honor. Uh, it could have been anybody. We have a lot of leaders in our room. I think that's why we're having success so far this year. But overall, it's just I'm honored, and I'm just trying to do the best I can. Now, what's your role like uh, since becoming a captain of a team like the Langley Riverman? How has it changed in the locker room? Uh, not much. I mean, I'm a pretty outgoing guy, so last year I was outgoing even as a rookie. And uh, I think you, there's times you need to know when you need to say things, and sometimes it's just doing your actions out on the ice, playing hard, finishing checks, playing the system. But you guys, the guys look up to you. You know, you're wearing a letter. You're an older guy. Guys just say, hey, Mitch can do it. Why can't I? I mean... You just try to lead by example, and that's the best thing you can do. And now, as you mentioned, the younger guys, Darren Craighead is one of the newcomers. He's a 97, so he's a, a young kid on a BCHL team like the Langley Riverman. Kind of taking him under under the wing, pardon me, under your wing. Can you talk about your relationship with Darren? Uh, yeah, it's fun. Um, you know, I'm teaching him how to drive a little bit, too. He doesn't have a car. He always wants to get a ride because he can't really get anywhere. But he's a fun kid. He's outgoing. He, uh, he adds a lot of variety to the room. He makes people laugh. He knows when it's time to be serious, when you can joke around. And it's just fun having that guy, especially with his skill at 16 years old or whatever. That's, that's unbelievable, unbelievable to me. And now are you ready for the, the rapid fire round, Mitch? I'm ready. All right. Favorite NHL hockey team? Minnesota Wild. Favorite player? <laughs> Scott Hartnell. Why? Uh, he had long hair, and I like the way he plays, a little tough tenacity, and he can score goals. Why'd you cut your hair? Uh, it was just a decision. I need to look a little more business for the start of the season, so we'll let it grow as our team grows throughout the season. Who has the second best flow in the locker room? James Robinson. Who has the worst flow? Austin Azurdia. Pretty bad. And now, how do you get your degree in Nilotology? You just got to buy into the philosophy. I try to be a philosopher on Twitter, maybe throw me a follow, throw out some philosophies of your own, maybe get a retweet, but other than that, you just got to buy into the Twitter game. And who do you model your game most after? Um, you know, right now I'm just trying to be the best leader I can. I look up to guys like Ryan Callahan and Dustin Brown who get it done every night, and they're just good leaders for their group of guys that they have in their room at the NHL, and I think that's all you can do is try to pick a guy like that and just try to model your game after him. Why did you pick number six? Uh, number six. Um, my favorite player growing up to watch on our high school team was number six. His name was Joey Frazier. So when I got there, uh, my number 22 was taken, so I had to pick a number. I picked number six. What kind of stick do you use? Uh, Bauer. Any particular reason why? That's just what the league gives us, and I'm more than happy with that. All right, thank you so much. And this week's player, pardon me, player spotlight has been on. Number six, Mitch McLean, forward for the Langley Riverman. Thanks for watching this edition of BCHL Central. I'm your host, Tally Campbell. Follow us on Twitter at BCHL Central. From the Parliament Buildings here in Victoria, BC, that is a wrap. <laughs>